eyes and say, okay, we were running through the middle and it wasn't working, so let's take it around the end. And then I could pat you on the back and say, go for it. And you get results and you're successful. And guess what? Your success is my honor. In other words, you succeeding, you doing more is what makes me successful. And I have no problem with that because I appreciate each and every one of you. And the reason I'm preaching this message, and it's so really, I can even tell some of you are looking at me funny because this is supposed to be revival. But I believe God is trying to take us outside of the box in the sense because what true revival is, is being vibed again. And you don't get vibed with shouting. And you don't get vibed with rolling on the floor and snotting all over the place. You don't get vibed like that. You don't even get vibed when you feel vibed. Where you really get by is when something hits you and causes you to wake up. And something leaps inside of you that you knew was there, but you didn't know how to make it jump. And through the process, it enables you to do things you've never done before. Now, this is where it's going to get interesting. It said that after this happened, that all of the people of the city came together and said, Paul and Barnabas, you are amazing. We love you. As a matter of fact, we can't even understand how God is working in you, so we're going to have to classify it and say evidently God came down and you're him. Come on. And where you really have to be careful is when you don't understand what God is doing. Naturally, you want to lock him up in a fleshly act or a fleshly deed to the sense so you can understand it. But I just want to go ahead and just break the mold and let you understand you're never going to understand everything that God does. So just go ahead and take the pressure off. That doesn't mean that you're not super spiritual. That doesn't mean that you're not mature in him. There's some things you're never going to understand. And the problem is we tend to think that what God does is locked up in a speaker. So that's why we will sit there and not move until the pastor gets up and gives an altar call. And for some strange reason, we've got it perverted in our mind to think that we can only get healed if he prays for us. Or we can only get delivered if he prays for us. Or if the pastor is with us, then we can do it. I want you to know that... That, that is so far wrong and the reason it got so messed up is somewhere through the line the pastor got afraid that he would work himself out of a job and in the process he wanted to have a monopoly on the anointing to feel like you had to come to him and usually that's because of monetary reasons or that's because of a parsonage or someplace to live and I just want to go ahead and let you know that I don't have a monopoly on the Holy Ghost but you do and we do together that there's power when we come together and I want you to understand that I believe that and I do and I'll say this with balance just in a moment we'll bring it full circle because you do have to have balance but i think we've got to get rid of the mindset that it's all about a man That's right. because it's about god yes. and if the man is shining brighter than the god then there's something wrong with that Amen. do you love me yes. you really do because i love you too i appreciate your time tonight i really do paul and barnabas had a problem with this because here's a group of people trying to lock up the power of god in a man and thank God they weren't like many uh, of the speakers we have on the forefront today. And, and my business is not to air anybody's dirty laundry. But I promise you, I've been around some mega ministries and I've seen some junk. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Let me just go ahead. What you see on TV is not always what you see, okay? And I'm not even going to name those because I don't think that's even right to do. Because who am I to expose somebody's weakness because I've got my own? Judge not lest you be judged. Can you say amen? But I want you to understand that many people... When that happens, and I've even had to uh, make sure that was not in me. Because my, when I first started ministry, I had a very successful ministry from the beginning. Partially because I started so young. And because of that, there was almost a, an aura around me where people were attracted by my age. And because I could speak much further than where I should be in life, it attracted people. And I found myself getting locked up in circles of people that were so man-centered and man-promoting in the sense that they felt like that, well, you know, church can't start till I get there. And it was so very easy because I, my calendar would stay filled and things were booked up. It would have been so very easy for me to develop the mentality, everybody owes me something. And some of these people I was even traveling with and gleaning from, they had that crazy things like they wouldn't come and preach at your church unless you had a a day pass to the gym for them. And waiting in the room, they had to have two fruit baskets and a big jug of Culligan water. Just crazy stuff. And thank God he allowed me to see that because they had made it to the place that when people came to them, they grabbed onto that. And unlike Paul and Barnabas that pushed it away and said, it's not us, but it's God. It's very tempting and it's very easy to grab onto that. And and when people start uh, giving you nice salaries, when people start doing nice things for you, it's very easy to get addicted to that. It is. I'm going to be honest with you. But thank God 
He's called us to be more than that. Because if that was the case, if I had to rely on people doing that to validate who I am, I'd spend all my life working to build relationships and maintain them. But thank God I'm secure in myself. And I believe there's some people in here that you're secure in yourself. And Pastor Mike, I believe you're one of them. And I believe that when we get so secure in ourselves that we don't have to have that for us to feel important. The simple fact that we woke up another day and had air in our lungs proves that we're important to God because we have something to offer. Otherwise, when we got saved at the point of salvation, he should have come and sent an angel to put his hand over our mouth and suffocate us for three minutes till we died and went on to heaven. But the fact that he left us here tells me he's got something for us to do. And now that should validate you. You don't have to have a man to validate you. You don't have to have a woman to validate you. There should never be a relationship that has to make you feel important. There should never be anything you have in your life. If you have that, you're in a place where you're needy. Not to God, but to man. You're needy, and that's a very dangerous place. I'm thankful that Paul was at a place in his life where he didn't have to have those things. But what happened was, is when they came to him and tried to worship him, he said, listen, You can't worship me because I'm of like passions. In other words, I'm just like you. And something just goes off inside my head. And I realized the greatest miracle that was done was not this lame man being able to walk who's never walked before. But the true amazing miracle is that the man the healing flowed through was no different than the man that got healed. And in case you missed that, let me just try that again another way. In other words, the true power was that God used an ordinary man like Paul to bless an an ordinary man like this lame man to get extraordinary things, but he used ordinary people to do it. We've even changed somewhat of our service in the sense of uh, even how we dress. That's why I'm wearing jeans, in case you didn't notice that from the waist down. And the reason we're doing that It's because there has even been a stigma in the area of this church because of the decorations and the elaborate things we have here. Our God has blessed us. Well, that church is just way too rich for me to go to. And my God, I'm going to tell you the truth. If me wearing a three-piece suit stops somebody from getting healed, I will burn all the ones I got. I am not too good to reach anybody. I'm going to tell you, I'm ordinary like you. And whatever it takes, and understand I'm not trying to compete with the world, but I am going to compel the world to come. And if it takes me having a little different style or doing something, I will do whatever it takes. Why? Because I'm ordinary like you. And if people could ever understand that it's not your hips, lips, and fingertips that causes God to love you, it's not in how you look or how you dress or how you talk, but it's a simple fact. When you have a heart that says, you know what, God, I'm comfortable sitting in the back. Hallelujah. When you have the heart to say, God, if you want me to speak, I will. But if you want to call Pastor Mike up here and let me take this little thing off my ear and stick it on his and let him go, I'm perfectly fine with that. Because guess what? This is not my revival. It's his. Yes. My name might be out on the marquee, but that's just to let you know I'm new here and I'm on state here. All that kind of, But understand, don't ever get that confused. Don't ever get that messed up. Because the fact of the matter is, my heart is for God. And I believe that God uses many people. I believe at the same time, this is where we have to bring balance. If you weren't here last night, then I would encourage you to get that DVD. As a matter of fact, we're going to have this whole thing packaged together to bless you. And if you can't afford that, let us know. I will give it to you because it means that much. And I don't ever want cost. And the reason we do that, and, and this is just a commercial on the the reason we do that is for the simple fact the camera that you're looking through right now needs to be paid for. All right? That's, all, that's the whole reason we do it. We're not here to make a huge profit. We're not here to try to get rich. We're here to try to be a blessing at the same time. The reason we charge for breakfast and things is because it costs something for milk and eggs. Can somebody say amen? amen. All right. Back on the subject. You have to have balance in things. Because you can look at something so ordinary... That you lose your ability to receive from that. And this is where you have to have balance. And it's difficult because many people take it to one extreme to the other. And I want you to know that there's a ditch on both sides of the road. You can go too far to the left and get messed up or go too far to the right. God has blessed me to have a a multicultural ministry. And and I've said this before and it's often misunderstood and I shouldn't say it but I'm going to anyway. That sometimes I even feel like I have been dipped in the wrong paint. And what I mean by that is I have been so heavily influenced through my upbringing through the multicultural environment of not just black and white but Hispanic in the sense that even in my style of preaching, just how sometimes I like to hoop it a little bit. I like an organ. I'm exuberant in my worship. I like to jump. I like to move. If I don't sweat during praise and worship, I feel like I'm doing something wrong, and that's just me. 
But God made me that way because he called me to be a chameleon in the sense that I've, I've